So if you've been following the world of football or soccer, you know that uh, Argentina won the most recent World Cup, and they did it largely because of this guy. I don't know if you know who this guy is. That is Lionel Messi. Now, for those of you who don't follow soccer very well, I'll give you a uh, United States reference. This guy, Messi, if he's like... Uh, LeBron James, then the Michael Jordan is Maradona. Diego Maradona. So, who is Diego Maradona? Well, he is possibly the greatest uh, soccer player in the whole world ever. And uh, just to stay for this video, I know around here in Argentina and in a lot of places in the world, they call it football, uh, but I'm American. In America, we call it soccer. If I were talking to someone in Argentina here about the sport, I would definitely say football, but I'm not gonna say that for this video. I'm just gonna say soccer. It's gonna be easier that way. So, Diego Maradona, possibly the greatest soccer player of all time. I mean, I'm gonna show you something. There he is right there. And you don't get a giant mural on the side of the building with your face unless you're really, really good. So like I said, he's possibly the greatest soccer player of all time. And uh, today, we're gonna go see a few Diego Maradona related sites. And we're gonna talk more about Diego Maradona and why he's so great and why he is absolutely beloved here in Argentina and uh, why they put his face on the side of a building. Let's take one last look at that thing. All right, let's go. So FIFA, the international governing body for the sport of soccer, uh, they designated Maradona along with Pele of Brazil as the greatest uh, soccer player of the 20th century. And let me tell you, uh, a tie for who's the greatest between an Argentine and a Brazilian, it does not go over well here in Argentina. You ask anybody around here, they're gonna tell you 100% with 100% confidence that Diego Maradona is the greatest soccer player, not only of the 20th century, but probably of all time. And uh, one of the reasons is because, well, he did the same thing that uh, Lionel Messi did recently, which was win uh, a World Cup for Argentina. Uh, he did it in 1986, and um, his most memorable two goals, probably of his entire career, uh, they came in the same game, not in the championship game, but in a quarterfinal match of the 1986 World Cup in Mexico uh, against England. Now, um, if you've seen some of my other videos, you may know that uh, there was a war between uh, Great Britain, uh, between the United Kingdom and Argentina, the Falklands Islands Malvinas War. And uh, in 1986, there was still no diplomatic relationship between the two countries. This was kind of peak, peak bad blood between the two countries after, uh, after the conflict. And uh, so a win um, for Argentina against uh, an England, a team in England was an exceptionally big deal. Um, it was a, a monumental victory. And the two goals uh, that he scored, like I said, are possibly his two most famous goals in his entire career. One of them uh, was Unfortunately, a uncalled handball where he struck the ball with his hand and it went into the goal. Uh, this goal is referred to as the hand of God. Mm, kind of because, you know, it may have been uh, God's intervention that the refs did not call the handball and the goal was allowed to stand. But uh, his second goal in that match was absolutely phenomenal. He got the ball around midfield and dribbled past five English defenders uh, and scored essentially an unassisted goal 
it's it's truly amazing. Um, the footage of it, which uh, I may or may not show uh, due to copyright, um, is is truly amazing. And even when you watch footage of it, since it was a 1986 grainy old footage, um, it looks incredible. It is it is truly an incredible goal. So uh, uh, looks like uh, here in the train station, I think the train's about to show up. So uh, we're going to go to, like I said, some more Maradona sites. Uh, we're going to go to the neighborhood of La Boca and see the uh, stadium La Bombanera, where the Boca Juniors team plays. He played for that team. Um, hopefully we'll also be able to go to uh, a house that uh, was his house when he was first playing for the Argentino Juniors and it's been converted into a museum and we may be able to go and see that. So uh, uh, train showing up, gotta go. Okay, so we have arrived in the neighborhood of La Boca and uh, this is a pretty well-known neighborhood. Uh, it's a pretty touristy neighborhood. I see a lot of tourists around here and it's known for uh, basically these very colorful painted houses. I mean, it's known for a lot of things other than that, <laughs> but uh, it is known for these kind of colorful painted buildings. Like this one here. And we get down into the, uh, this area here, there's people, stalls selling stuff. There's lots of cafes. Uh, there is a, uh, Maradona impersonator right here. Oh man, we gotta get a fucking gotta get a look at this guy. But right there, that's the most famous building, Caminito. This area is called Caminito. It's basically like a open air walking museum tribute to uh, the neighborhood of La Boca. And as you can see, it is packed full of cafes, beautiful painted buildings, and uh, lots of tourists. And right there. Up on the balcony of that building, you can see that is a statue of the man, well, the more recent man, Lionel Messi. Ah, uh, no, gracias, gracias, no. Get a little closer and take a look at the statue of the new man. Lionel Messi. So there's Lionel Messi's statue up there holding uh, the uh, uh, the World Cup trophy. And uh, I may be wrong about this, but I do believe that um, before, before uh, Lionel Messi and his team won the World Cup, that statue was actually of Maradona. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to walk around the neighborhood here real quick. Um, there are a lot of like tourists, like I said, um, but I've also heard that this neighborhood may be a little bit sketchy if you get outside of the tourist areas, but um, either way, we're going to find uh, uh, the uh, bom La Bombonera, which is the um, the uh, place where the Bo Boca Juniors play and where Maradona played. He played on the Boca Juniors on their team. And if you look around here, there's plenty of people wearing Boca Juniors gear. They're in the classic yellow and blue. And um, I guess we can sort of talk a little bit more about Maradona. And um, anyway, he, uh, he played for Boca Juniors. Before that, he played for a team called Argentino Juniors. And uh, he, he came up in a really, really uh, poor neighborhood, like exceptionally, and it still is. It's called Villa Fiorito. It's near uh, Buenos Aires. It's just outside of uh, the actual city of Buenos Aires. And um, it is not a very good neighborhood. In fact, I wanted to visit the uh, home of, um, of Diego Maradona when he was a kid. Uh, and you can actually visit the home. It is a uh, historical monument now. They've preserved it so that it, you know, it'll never be changed. It will be a historical monument, it will stay as it is. Um, and I contacted, actually, because it's not really accessible by public transportation, I contacted uh, more than a few uh, Remis services, you know, car services, to see if I could get a ride out there. And they all basically looked at me like I was crazy and then said, no, uh, absolutely not, we're not taking you to that neighborhood. So that gave me an idea that maybe 
it was kind of a not great neighborhood for me to go to. I've been in some neighborhoods uh, around here that are kind of a little sketchy, some neighborhoods that seem a little seedy, um, but that one seemed like legit pretty dangerous and that I shouldn't go there. So um, I will hopefully be able to put some pictures that I found of the actual home, Casa Natal de Diego Maradona. Um, and hopefully that'll be, that'll be good enough. Um, take a little wander through the neighborhood. Oh, and there's the guy right there. Statue right here. Of the man, Diego Maradona, right next to the Pope, which makes perfect sense because uh, around here in Argentina, he's basically as important as the Pope. Um, that's not a joke. In fact, I think if you go out to, I believe, Rosario, which is actually the town, the city uh, where uh, Lionel Messi is from. I think if you go out there, someone actually started a church like to Diego Maradona. Um, I'll look more into that and we'll put some information in the video about that like right here. Okay, hopefully you enjoyed that information that I inserted there about the church of uh, Diego Maradona. Anyway, uh, before we make it out to La Bombanera, just take a little walk around this neighborhood because it is a pretty cool neighborhood. And there is some pretty cool stuff to see around here. I am noticing there is a decent uh, police presence just walking past a police officer right here. And, you know, because this is a pretty touristy area, um, I think they have uh, increased police presence around the area just to make sure people aren't getting their uh, their stuff snatched and up there more statues There he is the man right there Diego Maradona and of course Lionel Messi These two are basically like uh, Soccer gods here in Argentina and for good reason. I mean they won World Cups and the World Cup That's a big deal it only happens every four years and soccer is extremely, extremely popular in Argentina. So to win a World Cup for Argentina, for the Argentine national team, is like an incredibly big deal. Basically the greatest accomplishment. Um, but another thing to mention about uh, Maradona is uh, he not only won um, a World Cup for Argentina in, uh, in 1986, but uh, he also played professionally for uh, a team in, in Naples, in Italy. And now Naples, if you know anything about uh, Italian history, Italian geography, and the culture of Italy, and the social climate of Italy, uh, the rich, they live up in the north, Milan and Florence. And the poor, they live more to the south. The south part of Italy is much more um, like, uh, yeah, uh, they're, they're, it's a lot more poor than the than the northern, and the the team in Naples was not uh, great when Maradona joined, and he actually brought them to uh, to the championship and won the championship of the league, which was a huge accomplishment at the time, um, especially because the you know that that team had not been good and they had been losing pretty consistently to uh, teams in the north. And he, you know, so he is, he is essentially a god in two countries, here in Argentina and also in Italy, especially in the southern part of Italy, down in Napoli. Anyway, we've made a loop here, and we're back around to uh, to uh, the building here, the famous corner, Caminito. And you can see across the way, there's uh, that building right there is painted all in the colors of the Boca Juniors. And right there, next to that tree, you can see sort of the seal, C A B J, the uh, Club Atletico. De Boca Juniors. 
So it's the Boca Juniors Athletic Club, and that's their seal. That's the that's the symbol. And you'll see that on people's shirts when they wear them. And uh, you can go up here and take, get your picture taken with uh, the statue of Lionel Messi. Um, I unfortunately don't have anyone to take my picture because I am by myself. So uh, I guess we're just going to have to uh, pretend, I guess, like it went up there. Anyway, I think this is enough poking around the neighborhood here. We're on our way. We're going to La Bombanera. It's like two blocks up this way. And we're gonna go check it out. We're gonna check out the museum. Uh, the museum is called like El Museo de Pasión de Bombonesque, which is like the museum of the passion of, uh, of uh, bomb, bombaneras, bombanerism. I don't know. Or, or, or Bokaneske, like Bokanism. I don't know. It's it's an interesting name, but either way, you can see the stadium right in front of us. The uh, giant blue and yellow thing sticking out past that tree. So uh, there it is. Man, look at that thing. Anyway, they call it the candy box. I think is the nickname for it. But uh, it's a pretty amazing stadium. And it has a long and storied history. Uh, we definitely want to check it out. So uh, keep on walking. It's one more block. Get a really, really nice view of this thing. I mean, man, look at that. I love stadiums. Honestly, I, I gotta say, any sport, doesn't matter what sport. I just love stadiums. They're so cool. Just like, you know, going to see like a ballpark in the US for baseball or like a football stadium or something. The soccer stadiums, man, the soccer stadiums around Latin America, no joke, they are amazing. They're huge, absolutely huge. And this one isn't even like that big by Latin America standards, but it is, uh, it is super famous. It's pretty famous. And interestingly, well, the Boca Juniors, they actually just played in the championship of the, uh, Copa de Libertador. It's like the Liberators Cup. Basically, it's the uh, it's like a South American uh, or Latin American uh, championship for for all the countries in South America and Latin America, I believe. And uh, either way, they played uh, against a team in Brazil, and of course there is a Argentine, like Argentina, Brazil rivalry in like absolutely everything. And uh, apparently like 100,000 Boca Junior fans like came from Argentina and descended upon Copacabana Beach in Rio. And, uh, and like huge fights broke out between them and the other fans from the other team, and I don't know. There was video of it, I watched some of it. It didn't surprise me. I mean, soccer fans, Latin America, they're, they're pretty nuts, man. They take it real serious. Oh, hey, check it out. Got a, uh, can see through the, let me see if I can get the camera through. There's a mural, a mural of the man himself, Maradona. But here we are, we're right here at the, the stadium. So a bunch of other people taking film and pictures. I'm not the only one. So, we'll take a quick look outside here, and then we got to figure out where the museum is and how we get in, uh, because we definitely want to go. I think we got about two hours or so before the ticket office closes, and we can check it out. But there it is, La Bombonera, C-A-B-J, Club Atlético Boca Juniors. Cool stadium, really cool stadium. I've seen uh, a video someone who took it inside uh, like next to one of the support columns and when like right after the Boca Juniors scored a goal and everybody was going crazy in the stands and you could see the support column like swaying you know like there was an earthquake happening so they they, they love the team they absolutely love the team anyway we're gonna find out where the uh, museum entrance is and then once we're in the museum uh, we'll check back in okay we're in and uh, right away there are this hallway with, I guess, the greats 
of the Boca Juniors. I gotta say, I, I honestly don't know that much about this team other than I their reputation of being like a very, very old and storied uh, story team. And uh, can look through and we'll see. There's the man right there. Diego Maradona. Diego Maradona. And uh, I think these are a life size. Um, and you can tell. I'll stand next to him. I'm tall. I'm a tall dude. Diego Maradona was not a tall dude. So he's, uh, let's see if I can get him in the shot. He would be pretty short compared to me. And I guess that's part of his, uh, you know, his, his charm and, and the story is that he was a little dude. He was not very big. I think he was like 5'6", something like that. But man, that dude could play. Like, yeah, he could play. Anyway, let's keep walking along. We'll take a look. I've been told already that I can film in here, so I feel good about that. A lot of people taking pictures. Try and sneak past. I don't want to get into anybody's picture, but I swear I probably will. I'm gonna run into someone taking a picture and just be the idiot who walks right in front of it. That'll happen. That happens to me all the time. And it will probably happen here too. Oh, look at this. There's a wall. Wall of amazing Boca Junior jerseys for over the years. The different sponsors. There's my favorite right there. Gilmes. Gilmes is like the uh, the beer of the people of Argentina. This is great. Let's keep walking. Go down and see the first level here first. So it looks like this is celebrating the when they won the cup, the Argentine championship uh, in different years, 2017-18, 2019-2020, different trophies, the Boca Juniors. Ooh, look at this. Don't know exactly what this says. El Trofeo Más Antiguo de la Historia del Club. So it's the oldest trophy in the history of the club. Look at that. Look at these guys. Very, uh, very happy crew right there. trophies on display. These are the more modern trophies. And this is the uh, Copa Libertadores that I was talking about. That's like the entire uh, South American uh, club. And you can see the when they get the trophy, it has everybody on it. It's like the Stanley Cup in hockey in the United States. They have uh, all the different teams. <laughs> this is loud cheering on the on the film here, but they have all the different teams, and you can see Boca Juniors won it there. I hope you can see it. In 2001, they won it in 2000. Um, they've they've won it more than a few times, and uh, they almost won the most recent one, but uh, they lost actually in that uh, that match that I was talking about, where 100,000 Boca fans invaded Copacabana in Brazil. They lost, unfortunately. It's, it's too bad, but, uh, you know, they got to the championship. And, uh, well, there's nothing nothing quite like getting to the championship and losing. But, you know, they'll, they'll be back. They'll be back at it. So, like... 
official record cards for uh, some Boca Juniors players. <laughs> this place is super cool. So I was told by a friend of mine, you can hear in the background, that's like the song for, uh, for the Boca Juniors team. And they sing it, you know, at the, at the matches. They sing it in the stadium. And uh, I was told by a friend of mine, I don't know if he was joking or if he was being serious, but he told me that if you don't know the song and you go to the game and you don't sing the song, that you'll get that shit kicked out of you. I don't know. I don't know if that's true or not, but uh, I'm not going to test it. And also, I don't think I'm going to be able to... Uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to see a Boca Juniors match while I'm here because I'm actually going to be leaving Buenos Aires uh, relatively soon. But this is interesting. Guitar given to the Boca Juniors by Luthier Rodolfo Pensa Martinelli, specifically designed for Lenny Kravitz's performance at the Bombonera, March 2005. So there you go. Any Lenny Kravitz fans? He played that. An amazing looking guitar. At the Bombonera, right here. La Bombonera. Anyway. Go upstairs. Oh, look at this. This guy's everywhere. He is everywhere. This is an entire wall dedicated to the man, Diego Maradona. Check this thing out. Now, the interesting thing is Maradona, he only played for Boca Juniors for like two years. Um, afterwards, he got transferred to uh, Barcelona, and after that, to Napoli. And interestingly, he holds, uh, I think it's a record, as the only player to be the highest uh, like paid transfer, meaning the team paid the most, like the, a record-setting amount. To, to, uh, to purchase the rights to him as a player two times. So when he went from, uh, from Boca Juniors to uh, Barcelona, he was the highest, it was the highest paid transfer ever. And then when he went from Barcelona to Napoli, it was also the highest paid transfer ever. So that'll let you know how good this guy is. Here it is. Now here's a picture of the stadium from above, which is great because we can't actually get into the stadium. Uh, the, you can go through the museum, but to get into the stadium, you have to actually buy a ticket and go to a game. Like I said, I don't think there's going to be one that I'm going to be able to go to. But I mean, look at that. It's a pretty cool stadium. Here's the stadium a picture of the stadium in the inauguration. 25th of May, 1940. Very cool. Here are the different uniforms. 1977, very simple. And no sponsors. 1978, still no sponsors. But of course, by the time he gets to the 2000s, Kilmes. The beer of the people of Argentina. There we go. It's like in 2003 they were sponsored by Pepsi. Not as cool as the Kilmace one, I'm gonna say, to be honest, but still, it's pretty nice. And then sponsored by something called Megatone. I have no idea what that company is, but uh. More trophies, people posing and taking pictures in front of them. Like I said before, I don't have anybody to take a picture of me, so I can't really pose in front of these, but they are cool. And whoever that kid was, he'll just be in the video. Very cool. The one in the center is the uh, Libertadores, Libertadores, the Liberators Cup. Uh, which I said before is like for all of uh, South America.
timeline over here. I think these are all the different coaches. Timeline of the, the coaches. Uh, oh yeah, technical, los, los directores técnicos, so technical directors. And their achievements. And right there, Silvio Marzolini, 1981. See it right there? See, 1981 Campion Metropolitano. Metropolitan champions. Basically, champions of, uh, of the Argentine. Um, uh, this the, the metropolitan area and uh, that was uh, the team that Maradona was on well, here's someone right here taking a picture in front of the Maradona mural of course I'm gonna wait and try not to be the jerk who walks through their picture. But uh, that was pretty cool, I, I gotta say. Even though Meridano only played for, uh, for a couple of years, the fact that they have this entire wall dedicated to him, this mural, I mean, it tells you how great he was, you know? And it tells you how important he is to, uh, to the history of the Boca Juniors, but also the history of Argentina and soccer in Argentina. Pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. Gracias. All right. Well, we are back. Out. Oh, another gift shop. And we're gonna make it through the gift shop without buying anything. I swear. We got here. It looks like just in time to miss the massive group that showed up. Better miss there are a lot of people here now. Oh, permiso. Lo siento. Gracias, señor. Yeah. When we got here, there was about three people in the ticket line. And now, I mean, just look at it. Look at this. Huge crowd of people. Huge crowd of people behind me. Going in. Everybody's going in to see the Boca Juniors. I think we're going to call it right here for our trip to Boca. Well, we've seen a lot, right? We saw... We saw La Bombonera. We saw the museum, the Boca Juniors. We saw a bunch of statues to Maradona. We saw that massive, massive mural of him on the side of a building. I mean, this guy, like, not going to lie. He, he, he's all that. He really is all that. And the thing is with Maradona is, like, he had the talent to back it all up too, right? Now, later in his career, he had a pretty significant downfall. Um, I don't want to focus on it, but I will talk about it. Like, he, in 1991 and in 1994, um, he, uh, he tested positive for cocaine and was suspended from the league for both those times. Uh, Actually, the second time, I think maybe it was a ephedrine he tested positive for, but anyway, tested positive for drugs. He had a drug problem um, in his later years. He actually, after leaving Boca, came back, and he retired with Boca um, as a professional in, like, I want to say, 97, 98. Like, his last season as a professional, he came back, and he played for Boca, which is something that happens a lot with, with uh, players. You know, they'll have, like, a one-year contract with the team that they were most famous with or you know like the team they started with or something like that but um, I, I suppose it was it, uh, at that point you know his his skills had had fallen off and uh, he later coached um, he coached several different teams afterwards but he kind of had a, a, a pretty significant fall off and like he had a lot of um, uh, trouble with his health and uh, with drugs later in life and uh, actually sadly in 2020 I believe in November of 2020, he passed away at the age of 60 uh, from a heart attack. It was his second heart attack, and um, yeah, so it, it, it was it was kind of a sad end for Diego Maradona. But I mean, just going in there 
and also walking around this neighborhood and also all over Argentina just to see how he's remembered. Um, you know, he's a legend. He really is a legend. So um, uh, hopefully we're going to be able to go out to uh, the museum of uh, the Casa Historica, uh, the historical house Diego Maradona when he first joined the uh, Argentino Juniors and they purchased a house for him. And it's a relatively small house, but they preserved it, so it looks inside like exactly like it looked when he joined the team when he was like 18 years old. And uh, it's a museum, you can tour it. I'm sort of trying to figure out exactly how to get out there and how to be able to tour it, because I think it's by like reservation only. But hopefully that will be uh, on this video as well. Otherwise, this will be the end of the video. Uh, so there's either gonna be more or there's not gonna be more. And uh, either way, we'll see you soon.